AI engineers are making more than $200,000 a year. And at companies like Meta and OpenAI, some are making more than 1 million. But here's the part that most people miss trying to break into AI engineering. They're learning the wrong skills, in the wrong order, and wasting months on things that companies don't even hire for. But by the end of this video, you'll know what AI engineers actually do, what skills companies care about, if you need math or ML for AI engineering, the projects that actually get you hired, and the fastest path to being an AI engineer in 2026. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google and interned at other big tech companies like Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. For this video, I reviewed a lot of job postings across LinkedIn, Indeed, and company career pages, read a bunch of articles and blogs, and chatted with a few friends who are currently working as AI engineers in foundational model companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. I'm not going to give you some theoretical path based on outdated advice. Instead, I'm going to show you exactly what companies are actually hiring for and how to get there. Let's dive in. Before we get into the roadmap, Map, let's first talk about what exactly an AI engineer is. When people hear about AI engineer, they might picture someone with a PhD, training neural networks from scratch, writing research papers, or doing complex mathematics. That's not what companies are hiring for right now for AI engineering. To clarify, this roadmap doesn't make you an AI researcher or a deep learning scientist. It will prepare you for AI engineer roles, the ones building LLM powered systems, not the ones training models from scratch. There are over 500,000 open AI and ML engineering roles globally right now. And most of them are looking for people who can build applications using existing AI models, not people who create new models from scratch. Think of it this way. A machine learning researcher is like someone who invents a new type of engine. An AI engineer is someone who takes that engine and builds an actual car people can drive. Both are valuable, but they're completely different skill sets. And right now, companies are desperate for the people who can build the car for consumers. When I analyzed those job postings, here are the technologies that kept on showing up. Python, prompt engineering, RAG, Langchain, vector databases, and cloud platforms. That tells you exactly where the market is heading. First, let's talk about the job market. According to recent data, the median salary for AI engineers is around $242,000 per year, but that's just the median. For foundational model companies like OpenAI, senior AI engineers are making north of $700,000. The Bureau of Labor Statistics projects a 26% growth in computer and information research scientist jobs through 2033, which is massively faster than most other occupations. AI-related job postings grew 25% in just the first quarter of 2025 compared to the previous year. And the interesting thing is that nearly 40% of the most in-demand AI skills don't even exist in the current workforce yet. That's a huge opportunity for anyone willing to learn. Now let's get into the roadmap. I've broken this into four phases based on what I found in job requirements and what my AI engineer friends told me actually matters. Phase one is all about building your fundamental skills. This is where most people either set themselves up for success or doom themselves to struggle later. First, if you're not already familiar with it, you need Python, not just tutorial style Python. You need to be comfortable writing production level code, focus on data structures, functions, working with Python and JSON and APIs, file handling and error handling. Almost every AI tool, library and framework runs on Python. Second, learn Git and GitHub. This also isn't optional. Every company uses version control and your GitHub profile could be a portfolio that hiring managers will check. Learn how to create repositories, make meaningful commits, work with branches, and handle pull requests. Third, get familiar with basic machine learning concepts. You don't need to be an expert data scientist, but you should understand what a model is, the difference between training and inference, what embeddings are, and basic terminology. This vocabulary would be essential for communicating with your team and understanding documentation. This phase typically takes 1.5 to 3 months. Definitely don't rush it. Mastering these fundamentals will save you months of frustration later. Next, we move on to the LLM integration phase, where you actually start working with AI. This is about learning to communicate and integrate large language models into applications. Start with prompt engineering. This is probably the most underrated skill in AI right now. Most people think it's just typing questions into ChatGPT, but real prompt engineering is about getting consistent, reliable results from models. You need to understand system prompts, view shot learning, chain of thought prompting, and output formatting. The difference between a good prompt and a bad prompt can completely change the quality of your application. OpenAI and Anthropic have good prompt engineering guides that you can check out. Next, learn to work with AI APIs. The OpenAI API is the most common, but you can also explore Anthropic's Cloud API and open source options through Hugging Face. Learn how to send requests, handle responses, manage tokens, and control costs. Hugging Face is especially important because it gives you access to thousands of open source models that you can run locally. This matters for companies that can't send sensitive data to external 
external APIs or want to reduce costs. Understanding both closed source and open source options makes you way more valuable. This phase typically takes two to three months. By the end, you should be able to build a simple AI application that takes user input, sends it to a model, and returns useful results. Next, phase three is building the actual AI systems where things get a bit more serious. This is what separates someone who can play with AI from someone who can actually build production systems. First, you need to master Langchain. This is the most popular framework for building LLM applications and appeared in a huge portion of the job postings that I analyzed. Langchain helps you connect models, tools, memory, and multi-step logic into cohesive pipelines. Even a simple workflow teaches you how to structure the steps an AI takes to complete complex tasks. And second, learn RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is probably the single most important pattern in enterprise AI right now. The problem it solves is that while LLMs know a lot about the general world, they know nothing about your own or your company's specific data. RAG lets you give models access to your documents, databases, and internal knowledge so they can answer questions accurately. You can take your documents, split them into chunks, convert those chunks into embeddings, store them into a vector database like Pinecone or ChromaDB, and then when a user asks a question, you retrieve the most relevant chunks and send them to the model along with the question. Almost every internal AI assistant or enterprise chatbot uses this pattern. Third, understand AI agents. Chatbots give you text. Agents will let you perform actions like querying databases, calling APIs, updating records, sending emails, and triggering workflows. And companies want AI that actually does work, not just an AI that will talk to you. Learning to set up these tools and give agents the ability to take real actions is critical. Fourth, get familiar with MCP or Model Context Protocol. MCP is an open standard that lets AI models safely and consistently connect to tools, data, and services like Perplexity, GitHub, Google Docs, Zapier, Figma, and so many more. This is so that agents can actually do real work, not just generate the text within the agent itself. This was first developed by Anthropic about a year ago, but it has been getting increasingly important and was actually donated to the Linux Foundation quite recently. It creates a safe standard layer between your AI agents and external systems. Finally, learn basic LLM ops. Building an AI system is one thing, but keeping it running reliably is another. You need to understand prompt versioning, monitoring, cost management, and how to handle model updates. This phase typically takes two to three months. Finally, the last phase is about turning those skills into a job. You could have all the knowledge in the world, but without proof, no one's going to hire you. To do this, you can start by building portfolio projects that showcase different skills. For example, you can build an AI decision support system using RAG. This would involve document ingestion, chunking strategies, embedding, vector databases, semantic search, and context retrieval, followed by structure generation with citations. Instead of freeform chat, the system will then output summaries, risk indicators, confidence scores, and source reasoning. This shows that you understand RAG fundamentals, prompt templating, context window management, hallucination mitigation, eval strategies, and explainability. All core enterprise AI concerns. Second, you could build a natural language analytics system that connects LLMs to structured data through SQL. The system could take ambiguous user questions, perform intent classifications, generate SQL queries, and execute them against a database, and return charts, visualizations, tables, and narrative explanations. This will demonstrate text to SQL, schema reasoning, query safety, data validation, analytics workflows, and how to bridge LLMs with traditional databases and BI style outputs. Third, you can build an AI workflow or consider with agents, tool calling, and API integration. This system ingests inputs from multiple sources like tickets, emails, logs, or forms, performs classification and prioritization, applies business rules, and executes actions across external systems. It also includes things like logging, audit trails, and fallback logic. Projects like this would show agent design, multi-step reasoning, automation pipelines, and real-world system orchestration. For each project, you can write a clean readme, include an architecture diagram, and ideally record a short demo video. Make the code clean and well documented. You also consider certifications if you have time. For example, the Azure AI Engineer Associate and Databricks Generative AI Engineer certifications are well recognized. They're not required, but they can help you stand out in a competitive market. And finally, in your resume, make sure to list your technical skills prominently. For example, Python, LinkedIn, RAG, vector databases, the specific tools you used. You can link to your GitHub and make it easy for someone to see your work in 30 seconds if they want. To sum up this video, the AI engineering field is moving fast. New models, new frameworks, and new techniques are constantly coming out. But this is actually good news for you. It means that the people who start learning now and stay consistent will have a massive advantage. The fundamentals I covered today, Python, prompt engineering, RAG, agents, those are not going away. They're the foundation that everything else builds on. So pick one thing from this video and start today. Don't wait until you feel ready. The best AI engineers I know learn by building actively, making mistakes, and figuring out as they went. If this video helped you, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more videos about career tips 
tips and tech and AI insights. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next one.